Should I go? Yeah, yeah go. Watch. I'm Shane Murray, field CTO of Monte Carlo, and we're going to talk through some uh, trends in the data industry today. <laughs> data contracts are typically an internal agreement between data producer and data consumer. Uh, the reason for, for data contracts extends from the fact that, that we've had this challenge within data teams of data producers really not understanding the downstream use cases of data. Really, that's come from a lack of visibility. And as we uh, attempt to bring more visibility to these teams and actually extend into using the data for machine learning, for production level consumer facing apps, we actually need a much higher standard of data. I think contracts are, are inevitable to some sense as we extend our data teams into supporting more business use cases that directly drive revenue for the business. There's just a requirement around certain data products to, to have a higher degree of uh, quality built into the data and reliability over time that will require contracts with these upstream data producers or software engineering teams. A semantic layer, or, or sometimes we're hearing it called a, a metrics layer, is a translation of your data uh, into business concepts such as metrics and dimensions. Yeah, the, the semantic layer is not by any means a new concept, but it's typically being confined to single use case like a specific BI tool. Notably, you know, Looker is, is kind of famous for their semantic LookML layer. But these, these layers weren't actually extensible to multiple applications. And so I think the, the fresh look at the semantic layer is about how we can apply it across various downstream use cases of the modern data stack. If you think about it, data teams forever have been plagued by data downtime incidents, these things that are caused by loss of data or, or incorrect data, late data. And so data observability is the concept about getting visibility over your data ecosystem so that you can actually monitor things like freshness, schema, volume, quality, and the lineage of data from end to end. And not only that, you're actually providing the tools to detect, resolve, and then prevent data incidents. It's a hot trend because we're seeing this direction of, of data teams deliver way more value from, from their uh, cloud warehouse and their, their lakes. You can break down the future into a few different things. One is how you're going to see data observability products evolve, and they'll really evolve with the modern data stack as we tackle issues like streaming data and different applications of data downstream. We'll start to see observability map to that entire ecosystem. System. I think secondly, you, you've got to look at the organizational changes we'll see, whether it's actually uh, federating ownership of, of data reliability through the organization or creating kind of centralized data reliability or operations teams that are managing many of the incidents for a group. Thirdly, I think you'll just see data observability become a must have for data teams as they start to extend into more machine learning use cases, critical applications for the business that are driving revenue and not simply being used to support decision making. Making. And so without observability, you're un unable to sort of build in that reliability by design and trust into the data system. Customer data platforms aren't necessarily dying, but I think we're seeing a rebirth and a shift in, in how they're thought about within data teams. They're typically a marketing silo that collected their own data and allowed marketers to really deploy that data into segments and campaigns that were very actionable for them. But the problem was that that essentially created a data silo uh, and was not natively built on the warehouse that, that the data team is managing. More than that, data teams have begun to build so much value in their, in their own data warehouse through the use of machine learning and other segmentations that they're developing, that it was just logical to start thinking about how the CDP connects into that environment. So we're seeing really two forms of this. One is the, the kind of cloud warehouse native CDP. And the other is the, the composable CDP where data teams are actually piecing together the data collection, the warehouse management, and the reverse ETL to actually build out uh, their own form of CDP. 
So what is a lake house? A data warehouse was, was really the logical place to start because we had structured data used in BI and analytics. And then along came, you know, a, a decade or a decade and a half ago, the, the data lake where it allowed you to have much more unstructured and semi-structured data streaming and, and real-time use cases, particularly for machine learning, but really lacked a lot of the practicalities of a, of a data warehouse. And so the data lake house really attempts to merge those concepts. So you get the efficiency of managing your data in one place, but you get the practicality of the warehouse combined with the extensibility of the lake. I see it as really bringing together these machine learning and analytics workflows. So things like feature stores and machine learning use cases that can be a more natural extension of some of the work that's done by analytics teams to build out data pipelines, metrics, and, and reporting. Yeah, I think with data mesh, people often jump to a technology solution, but it is both technical and organizational. Uh, it's really about uh, scaling at its heart, you know, and, and often what you find in a larger organization is teams are, are kind of hindered by the, the centralized bottleneck of a, of a data engineering team. And so what you're looking to do in a way is democratize the ability to create data products, uh, drive adoption, and also have them be owned and, and managed and built within the domains that actually have the expertise. I think uh, uh, on the pro side, really, I, I do think we're headed towards this data as a product concept, no matter whether you're focusing on implementing data mesh uh, principles or not. Data as a product is, is something that's here to stay. Everyone needs trustworthy data. Everyone needs that data product to be discoverable and they need interoperability across across many teams that are trying to use data products. I think some of the challenges teams are facing is how can you actually make your, your data platform truly self-service? I think there are components that are, are much easier to get to self-serve than, than others. You also have to really uh, step back and think about how data will be managed across domains. Uh, and then you need to pick a, a domain a team and set them up for success so they have the, the tools and the, the bandwidth to actually go and chase that goal.